What's going on, Neon Nation? Welcome back for a quick Cyberpunk 2077 news update. Today, we're looking at two articles which I stumbled upon after my last news update featuring Alvin Liu, which gives a ton of amazing new details, which I thought deserved its own segment. One interview is from WCCF Tech, and the other is from a German site called PC Games Hardware. Now the German one has been roughly translated, so take some of these details with a grain of salt, but let's get right into some of the new information from the game we have yet to hear. Let's start with the WCCF Tech interview. The first question from them is in regards to the E3 2019 demo and the dominant theme of people in the world attempting to upload human consciousness into machines to attain immortality. Lou responds as follows, There's a lot of things we're trying to do. The Voodoo Boys specifically are very obsessed with that, but other gangs such as the Maelstrom gang we showed last year want to become perfect humans. We explore it all and it is a very big game and we will talk about transhumanism and corporate greed as well. When it comes to romances, Lou confirms that you can exchange money for sex and that NPCs have been richly crafted in similar ways to Yennefer and Triss in diversity in regards to certain NPCs that you can romance. Next, we have a question regarding how many corporations will be in the game. Lou responds saying that he's lost count and that there will be both big and small corporations. He references the standouts as Militech, Arasaka, and Orbital Air, oddly enough, as some of the main entities. I say oddly enough because in our Cyberpunk 2077 community podcast, Cyberpunk 2077 community manager Lalea kind of squashed theories that we would be heading to space, and Orbital Air is a corporation in charge of this. When asked if there are factions beyond gangs and corporations, Lou mentions the nomads who have very strong ties to family and community and reject being a corporate slave or even working for the gangs. Lou mentions that we will be able to go to the outskirts of the desert in California and see things like power plants and abandoned highways. He also mentions this is the best place to max out speeds of your vehicles since it's hard to do in the city. In a question about committing crimes and if the police come after you, Lou mentions that if you start to wreak havoc in a big town, people will come and try to stop you and they are pretty powerful and mentions that Trauma Team is one of these enforcing entities. If you are in an isolated area, it's comparable to The Witcher in that if you chop the head off a villager in the middle of nowhere, guards won't just magically show up. They also ask if it's possible to get arrested and go to jail, to which Alvin Lou coyly mentions that he can't spoil anything about that. Maybe we will get locked up in the slammer and depleted of resources if we take it too far. As far as dynamic weather goes, Night City is incredibly polluted and has acid rain as a feature and there'll be some exploration on pollution and global warming. Lou also mentions that the entire city is unlocked from the get-go and that the UI will help lead players to different locales. You will be able to see all the high-leveled characters and enemies just like in The Witcher, where you could say go to Novigrad or Skellige under leveled, but you may have a hard time actually completing any of the quests. Difficulty settings were also something mentioned by Lou, where he speaks on the fact that there will be multiple difficulty settings and that there is a hardcore mode where the UI is turned off, which will be a real challenge. They also want to make the game accessible to those who aren't accustomed to shooters with smart weapons which help you aim. He also mentions a field of view slider for those who suffer from motion sickness and subtitles for people who have trouble reading some of the smaller text in the game. Lou also speaks on unlocking super rare outfits due to super high street cred and being able to see this with mirrors in game and via the character inventory screen. You'll also be able to craft and modify your weapons. For example, Alvin Lou mentions that you can change a gun's ammunition to thermal bullets which light on fire because they've built up so much heat. He ends this particular interview by mentioning that they are showing off ray traced emissives, skylight and ambient occlusion, and that he's seen screenshots internally that have looked better than the demo, so that's still a work in progress and they're still upgrading the visuals. Next let's jump to some of his answers in the PC games hardware interview. Our first new interesting detail is when they ask about how open the world of cyberpunk really is and what paths we could have taken during the E3 2019 demo. Alvin answers by saying creative approaches are very important. A side mission he worked on has you preventing an attack. A tester solved the attack by throwing a grenade at exactly the right angle and killing the assassin before he has a chance to strike. You can be creative in this scene and although you wouldn't be able to gather more information throughout the mission, you'll still be allowed to do this. He also clarifies that hacking is a minigame where the more experienced of a hacker you are, the more programs you're able to upload. If you're not skilled enough, you may be able to open some doors but maybe not deactivate cameras. Hacking gets harder as you progress deeper, and so you may choose to do a hack to a certain degree, or just break through doors and locked areas with brute strength, 
or apparently our drone, which is likely the spider bot, which seems to be able to hack and breach doors. He also mentions that they're planning for every company to have their own systems that you can hack. In the demo trailer, we see the company that controls this particular panel is called Petrochem. The game time does slow down for all hacking sequences, so you can do it safer, and it gives you a bit of a breather amidst battle. According to Lou, hacking takes around 30 to 45 seconds. Hacking itself seems to be a mix between Tetris and a hexadecimal code system. I'm not sure I completely understand it as it's hard to visualize, but you guys let me know what your takeaway from these answers are. There is also confirmation that the game pauses when we're in our inventories, but you cannot change out all weapons from this menu since some are tied to Ripper Docks. In the same vein, Lou mentions that you cannot choose what kind of damage your Mantis Blades do on the fly. The interviewer asks what happens if poison runs out for the blades, and Lou says that they are balancing the realism of their crafting system to address this. It seems to me that there will be a system in place like The Witcher 3's to craft oils and poisons to coat your blades and melee weapons with, which is very interesting. Lou also mentions that if you want something like better sniper rifle skills, it will scale with your character abilities, and if you want these skills to be even better, you can go get special training in it or buy increased cyberware. Coolness at an 8 scales your sniper rifle skills to an 8 because cool makes you able to handle stress better, thus making you a better sniper and fitting with the lore concepts. Weapons are scaled based on rarity and strength with white, green, blue, and purple values, and Lou mentions how factions will play into this. He mentions an example that if you take appropriate side missions in Pacifica, traders will show you more and more of what they're offering, and you will get better manufacturing ingredients and items as well as better clothing and weaponry. In a question about UI design and incorporating gameplay elements into the UI, Alvin mentions that in regards to damage numbers, they've significantly reduced the numbers popping, and now they are presented in other ways, such as corresponding animations, and people who don't want them can just turn them off. You will be able to customize the interface, and critical hits will manifest in different ways. A shotgun kill will have hit numbers larger and flying around your ears, and submachine guns will have more reserved numbers. When it comes to the inventory, you will only be able to carry a certain weight, just like in The Witcher 3, but you won't have to play inventory Tetris. Thanks for watching guys, and for everything and anything Cyberpunk 2077, join Neon Nation by subscribing to the Neon Arcade.